neighbor and, and just tell your neighbor, I am responsible. One more time, say it a little louder. I am responsible. Now, neighbor, look back at him and say, thank God. Amen. Thank God. Somebody going to be responsible. Hmm. 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 It just falls on you like a ton of bricks. But somebody is going to be responsible. We've been talking about Thus, during the entire month of journeyversary, tearing down and building back up. But I want to expand it and flesh it out more on this theme as we go into the month of October. And I'll let you know next Sunday we'll be here, same time, same channel, 10 a.m. Amen. 10 a.m. Next Sunday going into October. We, 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 we will continue to express and continue to tear down and build back up. We, we, we still have some building back up to do. Building back up in what way? Somebody say, what way? We'll build back up in expressing and in creating a responsible church, responsible community, responsible self, responsible church, responsible community, responsible self. What does it mean to be responsible? For if we don't personally act responsibly for our choices, our character, our values, then we end up missing what it means to truly be a child of God. Stay with me, amen. Acting responsibly. And in, in, in recent years, I, I'm sure that, that you are a, aware, but in, in recent years, there has been a decline in the acceptance of personal responsibility in our society. Follow me now. Don't walk out on me and get mad. Be responsible. Amen. Nobody wants to accept responsibility for anything. It's always somebody else's fault. You all know whenever I talk responsibility, I, I, I even wrote my dissertation for my doctorate of ministry on the responsibility of the church. And in that, I share a story about my upbringing, Teresa and how it always, when I didn't do my best, chemical, he was a classmate, and, and some students would get it. And so I always had that thing until my mother took it and slapped it out my mouth that the teacher didn't like me. And I told you how she shocked me and knocked a pause in me one day and said, why you can't make better? And I said, I don't know if they like me up there. And she said, I don't like you either. Amen. Now, some of y'all might have thought that was parent abuse, but it was good for me because it said to me, I need to step up my game, and I needed to accept responsibility that I, if everybody else could learn, I could find a way to learn, too. You wasn't going to be able to not learn and be lazy and sorry, amen. All of you should be good at God has given everybody at least one gift, be able to identify one gift, and, and the gift can't be sleeping, amen. I got a gift to sleep. In our society, no one wants to accept responsibility anymore. We call it blame casting. You cast blames. You throw it off. Or, or you have the, the victim's mentality. And I don't want to overshadow that there are victims in our society. But there is a, a victim's mentality and entitlement that says, I deserve it and the world owes me something. The world owes me. And you get upset. You fall out. You build your life 
around a false hope that the world owes you something. And when the world doesn't come knocking at your door and come in and get you out of bed and get you going in the morning, when the world doesn't hand you life on a platter just the way you like it, like Burger King, when the world doesn't come in and worship at your feet, you get mad and you go out and you bad mouth the world. Why? Because they haven't given you what you think they owe you. And all I'm saying is to wake up. They are never going to give you what they owe you. The only thing you are owed is an opportunity to get up and do it for yourself to act responsibly. Nobody is going to make you do. God is saying that we are called to be responsible. We want to accuse and excuse. You want to accuse other people. It's all their fault. And we want to excuse ourselves. Amen. You want to accuse somebody else and then excuse yourself. We are talking about journey at 12 years old. Journey is growing up. Many of us are older than that, and it's time for us not only to act our physical age, but also consider what's your spiritual age. Are you still a babe in Christ? You still on milk? You still breastfeeding? Hey, y'all heard me last Sunday. I got excited about that. I almost jumped off the stage. Actually, I did jump off the stage. But I wanted to wake somebody up. You need to know your your spiritual age. And the worst thing is, is to get older and to get somebody else involved. That's when I got excited. Get other people involved in your life and you are immature. And sometimes you don't see it until you put all your finances, until you put all your time and your energy on the line. And somebody that should be of age, they're still acting like a child. It's the worst thing in the world. It was then and it still is now. We want to excuse and accuse. We want to accuse everybody else and excuse ourselves. It's not my fault. I'm not going to accept, accept blame. I'm not going to accept responsibility. I'm not going to act responsibly. We have a problem with responsibility unless we are the ones being affected. Unless we are the ones that's trying to hold someone else responsible. And see, you can tell someone if they really understand that one of the, one of the troubling parts is sometimes we hold others accountable to a standard that we are not living ourselves. Mm. Everybody in here knows what God has done for you. And if you want to act responsibly, God has said, go do it for somebody else. Every sinner has a future and every saint has a past. All you got to do is check on social media, amen? It'll tell it all. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. I was born in 1969, amen? You got to dig it up, amen? And if God keep allowing the calendar change, some of them folk dead and gone, amen? Hey, 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 but every, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future and if God has blessed you, if God has made a way as he has given you grace in your life, act responsibly. Tell your neighbor to act responsibly. Act responsibly and share the goodness of God that he's given in your life to somebody else. In our society, we have all kind of rights. There, there are more rights now. Animal rights. Yeah. My wife was telling me the other day, somebody was sharing with us, and, and they, I'm keeping my son's dog. He, he has a dog, and he'll bring him home. She, and I heard they said, she came and said, you know, somebody said they don't want you to have your dog on a leash. I said, when I grew up, dog was on a leash. I said, if they know what I know, they better be glad it's on a leash. If they're going to be running, I got animal rights. 
You got gun rights. Now you can go and have an AK-47, and you don't have, even have to be registered or be in the Army at Fort Jackson. Oh, I don't mind you having an AK-47, but if you're going to have it, then go on down there to Fort Jackson and sign your name on the line. Tough guy. You ain't that tough. You ain't that tough. You ain't that tough when the rabbit got the gun. Amen. Go on out there. We need you. Amen. Terrorism, domestic and abroad. We have all kinds of victims' rights, children's rights, housing and abortion rights, all these rights, privacy rights. But I beg to ask the question with all of the rights, who will be responsible? Who will be responsible? Who will live out and say, I accept? and want to be held accountable for what is going on. So why act responsibly? I want to lift up three things very quickly, and then I want to move to one of the greatest acts of responsibility, and that's giving ourselves and our time and our talent and our treasure to God. Why act responsibly? One, because God is watching your life. The old song says, all night and all day, the angels... Keep watching over me, my Lord. God is is watching over our lives. Romans 14 and 12, our key verse says, So then every one of us shall give an account of ourselves to God. Everybody here one day has to give an account of yourself to God. You can't blame it on somebody else. You can't say, Mama, come and stand before God for me or Daddy. Every tub has to sit on its own bottom. Paul said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I want to know, what are you going to confess on that judgment day to God? Are you going to be able to say, Lord, I did my best. Lord, I tried to love. Lord, I tried to give. Lord, I tried to forgive. Do you understand that you're going to have to give an account to God? Yeah, there's going to be a test. Amen. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a test. When I was in school on Friday, we would think sometime we were, we were going to go home and have a free weekend, and the teacher would knock a pause in us and say, on Monday, there's going to be a test, which means you had to study over the weekend. You couldn't hang out and do what you want, la dee dotty and everybody. You had to prepare yourself where well, you can leave here today and know that at the end of life, and no man knows the day nor the hour when God will come for you, but there will be a test. And God wants to know, what would you say? If I was in the old church, I would, I would be able to preach to a congregation and say, what you going to say when God comes and when he knocks on your door? What you going to say when your tongue cleaves to the roof of your mouth and when you go to bed and your bed is no longer a bed but a cooling board? If I had the old church, I could talk to somebody and say, some glad morning when the battle it's over. You're going to have to fly away. Yeah, yeah, if, 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 <laughs> but, but, but since I have a modern church and we do church differently, I, I'll just say you're going to have to give an account of yourself to God. And there are only going to be two directions at that point. Maps won't help you. <laughs> ways won't help you. going to be two ways. Up or down. Amen. Amen. Up or down, we all going to have to give an account. Why act responsibly? Because God is watching your life. And the truth of responsibility says you're able to do the right thing when nobody is watching. You know, you, you can act responsibly when, when you feel like everybody, but can you do what's right? When nobody is watching parents, isn't that what we want for our children? We want for them to do what's right when they're outside of the house. We want them to make good decisions when they're outside of our control. God says, I am watching your life, but don't just be responsible because I'm watching. Be responsible because God is watching, and we want to please God with everything we do. We want God to be able to say to us well done my good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things
means uh, now come on, uh, I'll make you ruler over many. God is watching your life. Why act responsibly? Because God is watching our life. Then why act responsibly? And this is big. This is big because others are affected by our life. Uh huh. You're not on an island. No, no. You weren't born on an island. I'm talking to somebody in a family. You mess up, you mess up everybody in the family. I remember I used to go to funerals and I would hear people say, if they did anything wrong, they did it to themselves. I said, well, what's all these people here for then? We act responsibly because others are affected by our life. As a matter of fact, at the root of getting over any addiction, at the root of getting over any cause that controls us, is for us to take the will off of ourselves and put it on somebody else. Some of us, the only reason you ain't gone off the deep end and the only reason you haven't chosen to do something else that may not be right is because you love your life, but you also love the ones around you and you say, I'm not going to act a fool. I'm not going to be on drugs. I'm not going to give my life over to any substance because I love my family. Y'all don't hear me this morning. It's, it's hard to be responsible. It's hard to have to get up and do what you got to do. And sometimes you do it for folks that can give a care. But if you're responsible, it don't matter. You do it anyway. I, I didn't know it then, but I know it now. I didn't know it then, but I know it now. That to act responsibly means you got to be willing to believe and love for a cause beyond yourself. Yeah. And maybe that's why acting responsibly is so hard in this world in which we live now because we've been taught that it's, it's always about us. Responsib acting responsibly, catch this, acting responsibly takes the focus off of you and focuses you. Acting responsibly takes the focus off of you. And I know somebody, oh, Lord, it ain't about me no more. Oh, Jesus, what going to happen? It ain't about me no more. Fool, you got here because somebody acted responsibly and thought more about you to get you where you are when you're going to get a clue. I didn't mean to say fool. Take that out the record. What I meant to say is foolish one. When are you going to do for somebody else what they did? Acting responsibly takes the focus off of you. That's why Jesus was on the cross and he said, Lord, not my will, but your will shall be done. But Lord, if I had my way, I would come down from this cross. Lord, if I had my way, I would command 10,000 angels to mow down all those that are persecuting me. Lord, if I had my way, I would come down and walk away. But God, it's not my will but it's your will that shall be done. And I thank God every day of my life that God thought more of us than he did of himself. And he said, I'm going to send my son down through 2,000 generations. I'm going to send my son, not for the righteous, but that sinners might be saved. Is there anybody here? that know that he looked beyond your faults and he saw every one of your needs. If the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way, I dare you to get on your feet. I'm preaching in the back. If y'all can hear me, I dare you to get out of your seat and say, God, I thank you for being responsible over my life when I was sick he made me well he healed my I 
I'm out of time. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of message. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of message. God wants you to act responsibly because others are affected by what you do. When you don't do what's right, you're hurting somebody else. No, no, no such thing. If you've done anything wrong, you've done it to yourself. You might have started with you, but it didn't end with you. It went on to other people. I got one more thing to tell you. We act responsibly because God wants to bless your life. And if you want God to bless you, just be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 said that if you work in the Lord, your labor, your labor, your labor will not be in vain. So keep on working. God is blessing. Keep on serving. God is blessing. Keep on singing. God is blessing. Keep on forgiving. God is blessing. Keep on living. God is blessing. He's making a way out of no way. He's putting a bridge over your troubled waters. I know he's able. I tried him for myself. I don't need nobody else. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. And I want to help somebody. Stop telling God all the stuff that you need. But you ought to adopt an old school philosophy and say anywhere that you fix me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Wherever you fix me, Lord, just bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Wherever you put me, bless me. Wherever you settle me, bless me. Well, I got a mother, father. Whether my children do what's right. Well, I got a bank account full of money. Lord, I need you to bless me anywhere and anytime. Somebody say yeah. 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 Acting responsibly is not easy. It's time to move on past, accuse, and excuse. It's time to stop blame casting. We tearing down that journey and building up. And I prayed, I looked at the staff parking lot. Y'all saw the quote in the video. I prayed, I, I said, God, I need some responsible staff. And some, some might not understand what I'm saying, but they need to hear me. I need some folk that want what I want. You see, my, my me not being the smart, strongest, and the sharpest knife in the drawer, Miss Gates, I, I had to pray and ask God. And, and my daddy said, you need to hang around some folk that's going somewhere. Amen. That's the best daddy could put it. I've been doing it for 26 years. And God has always hooked me up with folk like Harold. Yeah, I found out Harold liked to get up in the morning. I said, he like, get up in the morning. I need some folk like to be there early in the morning. Amen. Because the Bible says, seek the Lord early in the morning while he can be found. And it say, be aware all them folk like to sleep. Amen. It said, a little slumber and a little sleep and poverty will come in your life. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. That's just pastor. That's Dr. Ashford. You can't get where you're trying to go hanging out with people that don't want what you want. They're always going to show you a way. And some of us, we too old. God told me to remind you, too old to be going down the same old road. Amen. That road been closed. That road been closed. Got a detour sign, road closed. Too, too, you, you can't get no more grace for going down that road. 
ain't going to get political, but you can't get no more grace. You said you didn't know before. But at some point, the scripture says every knee got to bow. And every tongue got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, so let's do this. Let's do this. We got to give God something and then we're going to open the doors of the church. Stay right there. Just stay right there. Stay right there. And I want you to prepare to give.